So after hiding from reviewers, Nvidia's finally launched the RTX 5060. Oh, and I wonder why they tried to hide it. I mean, who could guess, right? If you're like most people and have two functioning eyeballs and also a brain, the 5060 coming with 8GB of VRAM will immediately tell you that Nvidia has clearly not learned from their mistakes. They might have walked back some of their regressions, like using a GB206 instead of an AD107 die, like in the 4060, restoring shady units and TMUs, and then some, but that doesn't excuse the clear clearly lacking memory bus and memory size. Of course, this is Nvidia we're talking about here, they always have an excuse. They use GDDR7 much like the rest of the 50 series to increase memory bandwidth, but that does nothing to stop the abhorrent 8GB memory buffer. Even Intel managed more memory bandwidth with just GDDR6 on the B580 and a higher memory bus combined with actually having 12 gigs of VRAM. And it makes it a much better choice right off the bat in my opinion, for those who just want something that just works and can plug and play without surgically optimizing game settings to get the damn thing to work. And that's the thing, with the increasing amount of games releasing that either have forced ray tracing support or suffer terrible optimization issues because game developers are lazy and depend on the most powerful GPUs like the 4090 or 5090 to develop their games, due to it being easier and more cost effective, creates a perfect shitstorm for Nvidia to start incentivizing cruxes like DLSS, especially frame gen and the recent multi-frame generation to so-called fix performance issues on lower end hardware. And Nvidia loves this, because it means they'll sell you an 8GB card like the 5060 or 5060 Ti because you'll still buy it, or they'll upsell you with something like the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, which only provides a marginal difference with the same memory bandwidth and similar specs just to eke more profits out of you if you want more VRAM. I kid you not, it's got so f***ing bad that even f***ing AMD says that 8 gigabytes is enough and there's no use for more than 8 because most gamers are playing mostly esports titles. If that's the f***ing case, why are you still charging $300 for a card in 2025 with only 8 gigs of VRAM? If you think 8 gigabytes is fine for esports titles, then sell a card for much cheaper, like $100 to $150 with half decent performance and call it a day. Well of course, anything to avoid goodwill for the sake of margins and profits. And it's wild to me that Intel's the only one left to pick up the pieces and start releasing decent offerings like with the B series. Anyway, enough rambling and onto the actual review. Now we tested 7 games on the 5060, not all of them are exactly the latest games, but it should give us a balance between more lighter and more intensive games, and we'll look into ray tracing performance in the games that support it. But we also overclocked the 5060 quite substantially in fact. Nvidia actually leaving quite the headroom, allowing for a plus 450 on the core and a plus 2000 megahertz uplift on the memory. The Asus Prime 5060 we have here also allowed for a plus 17% power limit. And across all games of 1080p rasterization, it manages a 25% uplift compared to last gen. And while not terrible by any means, it isn't exactly awe inspiring considering it has 25% more shady units. Overclocking does give impressive gains by upwards of 11% and ends up tying the 5060 Ti, again just showing how little of a difference these cards are apart from VRAM, meaning it's clearly an upsell. It's impressive for an 8GB card, sure, but this is 1080p in pretty ideal conditions. At 1440p though, it jumps to a 29% uplift over last gen, but compared to the B580, it's only 23% ahead, so not exactly groundbreaking. Overclocking unlocks a good 11% more performance, again just a few frames behind the 5060 Ti 16GB. Turn on ray tracing though and things unsurprisingly take a nosedive. At 1080p, the 5060 edges out the B580 by less than 3 frames and overclocking only manages a 12fps uplift, marginally outpacing the 4060 Ti 16GB. But where that beats it in VRAM, the 5060 beats it in raw performance, so it isn't surprising. But the 16GB 5060 Ti outperforms by over 21% compared to the 5060 when overclocked, meaning we're already likely at the floor of what this card is capable of, all thanks to Nvidia's f***ing incessant decision to only give it 8 gigs of VRAM. If an 8GB 5060 Ti were on this chart, it would have had the same performance as an overclocked 5060, there's no doubt about that at all. Finally at 1440p, it falls even further behind, and overclocking can't quite save it with just a 6 FPS uplift still losing to the 16 gig 4060 Ti. Without overclocking, it just about matches an Arc B580 with only about a 10 FPS uplift compared to the last gen. So when talking about value, don't get 
ahead of yourself. It's a good value on paper, first and foremost, and rasterization at 1080 and 1440, but overall, this will vary game by game and only considers the overall performance. Overclocking sweetens a deal, sure, but something like a used 3680Ti has very competitive value, and Intel's B580, while it doesn't win in raw performance, has more VRAM and isn't far behind in value. And see what I mean about Nvidia's upsell. The 5060 Ti 16GB at its $480 mark is a terrible value, but you're coerced into buying it just to get more VRAM. Take that away and raw performance isn't much better. And with ray tracing, sure, it continues to be good value on paper, but Intel's B580 is seriously competitive and is the overall better choice, and the 3060Ti is a great value when used. And the 16GB 5060Ti's value improves because it's becoming increasingly dependent on its VRAM, which segments the 5060 even more. So don't be fooled by these charts. Anything other than gaming is fine on the 5060, but not a huge improvement over its predecessor, and applications like Blender with only a 17% improvement, with overclocking again nearing the 5060Ti 16GB. It's far better than anything from Intel, Nvidia 30 series, or Radeon, but that comes down to Nvidia's huge advantage with CUDA. And performance and professional workloads is expected, with similar performance to a 5060Ti, especially when overclocked, but it's not groundbreaking. A last gen 3060Ti or 7600 is right behind it in 3ds Max, but does handily outperform Intel in SOLIDWORKS and also Mail. Lastly in Premiere Pro, thanks to its memory bandwidth improvements due to GDDR7, the regained ground from overall specs improves its performance in GPU effects gracefully, compared to all last gen cards, especially when overclocked. But Intel's Arc B580, thanks to a similar memory bandwidth, holds up quite well, though not enough to completely outperform it. VRAM can have an impact on the video editing experience, so going with a card that has more can be beneficial. Looking closely at individual games like Forza, performance is pretty impressive. An instance like this at 1080p, where we aren't limited by VRAM, shows great raw performance, especially especially when overclocked slightly outperforming the 4070, but stock performance still only shows a 25% improvement over last gen. Bump that up to 1440p, and the 5060 overclock still matches a 4070, and again generationally improves by around 30%, and is similar overall to what we saw in averages. Typically aimed the advantage, COD Black Ops 6 performance loses to a 7600 ever so slightly, but picks up the pace when overclocked. Generationally, we only see a 16% uplift, but these are less than ideal conditions. Intel's B580 is also out of the equation giving the video some extra leeway, and jumping to 1440p it's much the same, though so this time at stock settings it matches an RX 7600 and a better 22% improvement to last gen. Overclocking also brings it much closer to a 5060Ti 16GB and a 12% improvement over stock settings. Intel continues to struggle in Far Cry 6, so it's still out of the equation, but we're seeing the same solid but not amazing improvements with the 5060 over last gen with a small but notable uplift when overclocking. The 5060 did match the 7600 XT in lows, perhaps due to its doubling of VRAM, but it's hard to say. Jumping to 1440p, you can expect the same improvement with the 5060, with the 7600 XT right behind it. However, turn on ray tracing first at 1080p, and performance falls apart. Even overclocking can't quite save it, only matching the f***ing two generation old 3060, with more than half the 1% lows. It even regressed slightly over the the 4060, while AMD 7600 fared better with 1% lows, but it's really dependent on how each architecture handles a low VRAM scenario. But even the Intel B580, with all its shortcomings in this title, fared the best out of the bunch. At 1440p it's even worse, now behind in averages over the 3060, even when overclocked and behind Intel's last generation A750, yikes. And it's plain to see why this was the case. VRAM usage rose to the high 90s, causing visible stutter especially in ray trace scenarios. And even though it didn't affect rasterization in terms of consistency, it likely held back its performance overall. So now you understand why it's a f***ing terrible idea to put 8 gigs of VRAM on a brand new $300 card in 2025. Even in a game like Far Cry 6, which came out in 2020, 21, by the way, performance falls off a cliff. Cyberpunk though returns to the same old gains we saw earlier, about 30% more performance overall, and overclocking gave a 12% improvement on top, now matching the likes of the 4070 and the 5060 Ti 16GB. Intel had particularly impressive performance in this title though, as the 5060's stock settings only edged out the B580 
580 by around 15%. And jump up to 1440p and it still holds up, outperforming the last gen by 39%, which is the highest we've seen today by the way, but right behind the ARC P580. Overclocking also impressively puts it in line with the 4070, so that's a good thing at least. And things even hold up when ray tracing, though this is only the medium preset mind you. It matches the 4070 when overclocked and ahead of the 4060 by 39%, going from semi-playable to fully playable at stock settings. But jump up to 1440p and as expected, things quickly fall apart, losing in 1% lows over the B580 even when overclocked, but at the very least matches the averages of the 4070. And it still delivers a 42% uplift compared to last gen, but 1% lows barely move the needle thanks to our little friend known as 8 gigs of VRAM. Hitting the VRAM limit was most definitely the issue, with the FPS plummeting as memory usage increased. So even with pretty minimal ray tracing in this title, you get less than ideal performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider continues the trend in terms of uplift over last gen with decent improvements when overclocking. And the same goes for 1440p, with solid improvements around and nothing too off-putting. The turn on ray tracing and performance improvements drop a bit, but maintains decent consistency. When overclocking, our improvement is halved, therefore we're running out of VRAM, you'll have to pay extra that looking at the 5060 Ti 16GB of course, and at 1440p we see very marginal gains, becoming increasingly limited by VRAM, allowing Intel's B580 to edge forward. So VRAM usage remained quite high on the 5060, becoming problematic mainly when ray tracing. But F124 shows a consistent improvement over last gen, and a fairly noticeable one at that, with a decent performance uplift all around. And the same can even be said for 1440p, staying in line with the trend we've seen in most other games. And even when ray tracing, performance maintained itself, and is much better compared to the previous gen 8GB cards, and when overclocking, matches a 5060 Ti 16GB. And that carries over at 1440p, with improved consistency over the 4060, and similar uplifts were seen before. The 4060 tended to struggle here, particularly against the ARC B580, so perhaps the extra memory bandwidth with the GDDR7 has made the difference on the 5060. What remains though is the high video memory usage across all scenarios in F1, no matter the resolution or with or without ray tracing. In our last game for today, which is CS2, the 4060 wants neck and neck with the age old 1080 Ti, the 5060 is now ahead of its predecessor by upwards of 23% overall, and overclocking brought it ahead of the 5060 Ti 16GB. And finally at 1440p, we see similar improvements over last gen and with overclocking. So I guess they weren't wrong when they said 8GB cards were enough for esports titles, with VRAM usage remaining pretty well within reason, but this probably isn't a surprise to a single person watching this video. And surprise surprise, the 5060 is the most efficient card, yay so surprising. What I at least did find interesting is that the 5060 remained as efficient when overclocked. So it begs the question, why wasn't this the performance out of the box? Now of course, the car's TDP increased by around 30 watts, but there's enough headroom that it never reaches that at stock settings, only averaging around 130 watts. It also just so happens that increasing the clocks means it matches the 5060 Ti 16GB in power usage. So to me, it seems like they deliberately lowered the clock to reduce power target and segment the cards even further, instead of just running it at its rated TDP. So just overclock this card if you can, because Nvidia sure as hell isn't going to, unless you use their shitty AI overclocking tool, but that's the only exception I can think of. With ray tracing, the 4060 is a more efficient card, but only by a hair's length, and once again, overclocking retains its efficiency, so I guess that's a plus. And also, you'll only see a couple of degrees higher core and memory temperatures on average, so it's really worth it in my opinion. Fan noise levels only increase by around a decibel, so Asus at least has done a really good job with the fans and cooling design of this card. And it looks pretty clean as well, like a mini version of the 5070 Ti. So hats off to Asus, I guess. In addition, they've included BIOS profiles with an inbuilt switch, including a quiet and performance mode, and while quiet does increase temperatures, it's only by around a degree, mostly due to the fan ramping up slower, not so much speed though, so you'll only see about a decibel reduction overall, so I wish they lowered the fan speed a bit. In conclusion, the RTS 5060 isn't completely sh it can deliver some decent frames, especially if you crank up the overclocking, but holy hell, Nvidia is still sticking to their idiotic 8GB VRAM obsession, clearly learning absolutely nothing. It's honestly baffling how stubborn they are about this garbage memory setup in 2025, especially when games are becoming more demanding than ever. Sure, 
Intel's B580 might be slightly behind in raw horsepower, but at least they bothered giving it 12 gigs of VRAM, and enough bandwidth to actually use it properly. Nvidia's transparent attempt at upselling you on the overpriced 5060 Ti 16 gig is painfully obvious. Like we can see right through your bullshit in the video. If you're just gaming at 1080p without touching ray tracing, then yeah, you'll survive. But only just. The second you even glance at ray tracing or high resolutions, you're basically screwed unless you like stutters and tweaking every damn setting just to get playable frames. The bottom line is this. The 5060 isn't total trash, but Nvidia seriously dropped the ball on the VRAM. Again. And it's getting f***ing old. So do yourself a favor, consider literally any other GPU with more than 8 gigs of VRAM because Nvidia sure as hell isn't looking out for you. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and check out this video on the screen. See you in the next video.